Welcome back to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Hamilton. I'm going to be walking you through the Bitcoin macro charts right here, right now. That's going to be including on-chain. That's going to be including the liquidation heat map. It's going to be including uh, just the trading view macro structure charts, as well as all the trades I'm looking for. Uh, and yes, I have been doing this for eight years now. I kind of know my stuff on this stuff. All right. So uh, without further ado, let's start off here with the energy value. We can see here this red line being obviously, if we get above it, massive parabolic action. That's what we're looking for here. But uh, as we can see, we are below it uh, and it has still been decreasing. 74,100 is the area we need to get above to go absolutely parabolic here. So that's the first little bit of data here currently below it. But if we get above that level, 74K, oh, it's going to be looking great for Bitcoin. Okay. Uh, next up, we have the macro index. This takes open interest. It takes the order book. It takes on chain uh, and it makes uh, a beautiful chart here. If everything's looking good, then we get a green candle okay and when it's green again parabolic when it is red super bearish and when it is orange is the time to chill okay it's the time to chill it's the time where we're going to be trapping all right uh, and as we can see here uh, the main point is we did not turn red this week that's good okay that's fantastic if this turned red i would be pretty bearish i'm not gonna lie i would be pretty bearish if this was red uh, as of right now currently still orange and we have had a little bit of a pump up if we're looking at the liquidation heat map here yes just banging it up towards the upside uh, just destroying people these guys made so much money in this move up it's ridiculous hundred yeah, just nearly a billion dollars here on the way up. Uh, the market makers have just gobbled up here, right? Uh, what I will say is the on-chain does look pretty bad, okay? It does look bad, uh, but the liquidation heat map does look like it wants to make moves up here. Uh, if we do head below 62k at any point today, pretty bad across the board. I would expect us to come down to about 61, if not lower. I do expect 60k to hold at this point, but uh, yeah, if we do want to head lower there, uh, we will just be waiting for uh, essentially certain levels to be reclaimed, and then we find a beautiful long. Last thing I want to talk about here uh, would be the uh, the most recent ETF inflows, okay, or net flows, we should call it. Uh, we can see here that, yeah, it has kind of evened out over the, the the end of last week, right? Uh, we did uh, we did kind of end that losing streak of uh, of ETF outflows, right? It was just outflows all week. It was disgusting. Uh, but yes, towards the end of last week, uh, we did get some inflows, and now it is just kind of in that neutral zero point. Uh, so if we want to have a move up here, we need to see inflows come in today or tomorrow, and I want to see like 30 mil to 100 mil inflows to really kind of clarify that macro uptrend. Okay, moving on in to the charts that. Are aren't even here. Here we go. Is that going to work? No. There we go. Beautiful stuff here, right? So uh, we can see that, uh, yeah, on the macro, there's a lot of things to talk about here. So we're going to dive in very, very quickly. But uh, yeah, essentially, the short story is we're still inside our ginormous range. We haven't broken over our major diagonal descending resistance, nor have we broken over the trap zone. We have attempted it today, right? We did get up to 63.7, but currently wicking out right now. And if we do essentially close underneath this level, okay, it's not fantastic. And any wick we should be expecting to be absorbed towards the other side, which would align with the upper volume weighted daily the upper volume weighted ATR band on the three day. Okay, so uh, yeah, coming down here does make a little bit of sense. But uh, yeah, that might be a tomorrow thing. And uh, this can obviously finish today in 11 hours up here anyway, which would be super bullish, right? But as of right now, looking like it may have lost some momentum here after this pump. And now it's trying to find another wave. If we break this high, it's going to be fantastic. But I'll get to that in a minute. There are some trades there. Uh, but as of right now, the macro investment trades, we're again looking for 72k to break for a huge long up to 80k okay uh, and then towards the downside on a shorting scenario uh, if we lose 56k at any point i'm talking multiple daily closes uh, for both of these trades right uh yeah if we do lose that 56k area i would be expecting us to come down to the low 50s completing this measure move before uh, ideally heading up from that point and really the closer we get to this this white structural line here guys this is the bull run right this if this holds we're still in a bull run, in my opinion, okay? Uh, we can be below this bull market barrier, but I think it would just be a sideways period where we oscillate before breaking through, personally, as long as this, like, to keep the bull run, right? Uh, if we lose this line at any point, it's actually 
incredibly bad, really, really bad here. Uh, let's just take a look at where this middle purple line is because we love to oscillate around this thing. Uh, it is currently at 42K, which would align with, if we did get a crash over the next few weeks, it would align with uh, with us coming down to a, a, the low 40s, which would be pretty brutal, okay, for a lot of people holding Bitcoin. But as of right now, yeah, we're pretty far away from that point and we are just trying to essentially surface above that bull market barrier. Bull market barrier here, guys, uh, just to kind of uh, summarize real quickly if you are newer to the channel. If we're above it, bull market, it's time to go. Let's let's bang it, right? If we're below it or we're inside it, very bad. Usually it's a transitional period. We're currently inside it. So uh, yeah, not fantastic. Not fantastic here. And you can see here in the, in the previous runs uh, that, uh, yeah, normally we just tap it and bang it, right? But uh, the fact that we, we, we've kind of transitioned through it a little bit is not great, okay? Uh, on the upper side of it is good, okay? It could be a scenario like this where, uh, yeah, we did get the initial pump and then we had uh, the fall down and now we're just going to be grinding on up here. Uh, if that is the case, then we're right on track, but uh, I think that's, that's a bit of a long shot. I think what's more appropriate here is to look at the on-chain, look at everything that's happening behind the scenes, what are the market makers doing, what are the miners doing, and you can see just generally if we are looking uh, at this hash rate, right, this is how much power is going into mining Bitcoin. We can see that is still in the red. Once this uh, crosses towards the upside, it's a fantastic sign. It's actually super bullish and we will get a long signal on this indicator. And if you guys remember, right, our last long signal was roughly around about 30K and then that was closed out around 60K for an investment long. So uh, yeah, fantastic stuff there. If we can get that, and again, this is free on my profile, feel free to check it out. Uh, yeah, if we can get this thing bullish and in, in a long signal, in, in a good bullish posture, then that'll be fantastic and that will be uh, bullish for Bitcoin, of course, right? Uh, but yeah, the criteria we really need to hit here is to get above this 67K area and hold above it. And this is why I'm really just targeting up here, 72K. We bang it above there, then, uh, oh, then uh, yeah, I think uh, I think there's serious bullish momentum to be had. And as we said right at the start of the video, if we break 74.2, then uh, we should essentially be parabolic from that point. So we could see 80K very, very quickly here, right? So this is essentially uh, the area where we should be eyeing up a potential buy, of course. Uh, and now let's jump in to the, uh, the short-term trades, right? So short-term here. And again, if you have liked the video, guys, it would help me out a lot, okay? We're trying to grow the channel a little bit more here, right? Uh, but we can see that, uh, yeah, we did just test this trade trend line that was previously broken and uh, yeah it got rejected not just off the trend line but uh, off of the 60 minute volume weighted ATR band on the one hour okay so if we can if we can break up here I think uh, I think there is a trade to be had right so I think there is a trade here uh, if we can just uh, draw this in Actually, I think it's going to be more appropriate to draw in something uh, a little bit more like this, right? Uh, so if we can have something like, actually, let's bring this up to the four hours, see how it looks. Yeah, okay. So this this is this is okay. So yeah, if if we're bringing this up like so, uh, we have some sort of triangle structure, pendant pattern, whatever you want to call this, right? Some sort of triangle structure forming, okay? Uh, symmetrical triangle. Typically, with symmetrical triangles, if we're in a downtrend like so, we typically <laughs> we continue it. I know you guys don't want to hear this, right? But uh, uh, yeah, we usually continue it to the downside. And uh, as we said, these uh, testing these lower 50s would make sense here towards the lower side. And also, uh, yeah, I mean, the, this would still be inside the trap zone. It would ne wouldn't necessarily uh, indicate uh, the move downwards until we break underneath that 56K area. So yeah, still room to come down here and complete another measure move towards the downside. Uh, and I do have an another serious bit of data here that you should be looking at. Uh, and that is the CME gap, right? So I'm not going to show you the CME chart, but this indication indicator here, right? Uh, it's one that I did make and we can see that, uh, yeah, we can, we can, well, I, I kind of made it. I, I adjusted it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we can see here that, uh, yeah, we this is where CME closed. Okay, this is where CME opened. So if we're just going to look at that gap here, right, we can see around a 2% move. Uh, and uh, if we did lose about 61.6 here, then uh, there is merit to say that we come down. But I, I would probably be more targeting something like a 1% move. Just looking at this structure on the one hour, as you can see here, right? I want to break this structure first and then, uh, yeah, potentially fill that CME gap. But but uh, we could actually hit this this line and not fill the gap. Uh, well, technically fill the gap, but um, yeah, we wouldn't get a move to support that, right? But typically, if we have a gap like this, we like to go back to that closing area in the next week. It is the next week. So uh, yeah, 60K target here. It, it's, it's not out of the question, okay? It's not out of the question to see a 60, 60K target. So uh, we'll watch that intently. But uh, yeah, that's the downwards kind of uh, moves we're looking for. Towards the upside, the trade I'm looking for here 
guys. The trade I'm looking for here is uh, very, very simple, okay? What I want to see is us break essentially, um, if you're a bit more cautious above this line, but there might not be enough of a move in that. So let's just take a look. Oh, there's a huge move here. Okay, so uh, yeah, if we do want to just run from this point, the, the on-chain doesn't really support this happening. But uh, if it does, then uh, the way we'll be reacting to it is waiting for this breakdown point to break. Okay, so if we get above 64.4, all right, we'll be looking for a long trade all the way up to about um, yeah, to about 66.8, this kind of area, 66.7, we'll call it, right? 3.5% trade, massive, massive move. We're seeing that volatility increase now after this kind of sideways period that we were in. Uh, we did also reclaim that four-hour volume weighted ATR band. I did miss this trade, guys, unfortunately. Uh, I was uh, I was busy and asleep on the, the remainder of this pump, so I could not get the trade. But uh, yeah, if you did find this trade like we've been talking about all of last week, fantastic stuff. Congrats to you. I'm sure you made some money there, okay? But but uh, yeah, again, just proving my point, when we reclaim this four hour volume weighted ATR band, we do get massive, massive moves and it is tradable. And you can just see that just proven again, uh, as we talk about all the time. Yes, uh, lots of pumps off this lower volume weighted ATR band, okay? Um, besides that, guys, uh, yeah, we do have another thing to, uh, to highlight here. I'm just trying to get something up real quick. I forgot to prepare the video, but uh, yeah, I did just want to say here with this trade, guys, make sure we're above this 200 uh, EMA on the four hour. Okay, if we're above that, fantastic stuff. If we're below that, then the trade is, is not necessarily a no-go, but it is a lot more risky to be taking that trade. We get lots of volatile price action around this thing, so uh, we don't want to be a caught off guard here. If it does turn out to be a resistance, then it could be a trap, and then we head down, right? So yeah, just Bear that in mind when you are looking for this trade. But uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of space here to get into this. So uh, it's not really a big problem. If you want the 2% trade instead, just wait till we're above there and uh, easy stuff, right? Easy stuff. A lot more high win percentage there will be breaking out looking pretty good here. You may even be able to ride this all the way up to the four hour as well. But I imagine once we've broken out, this four hour will be roughly in line with the end of this measure move anyway, right? Uh, so that's what we're looking for here. And the reason why we're looking for this trade isn't just for the pattern, but it is actually because of this this uh, volume weighted ATR band, 60 minute one, right? Uh, you when we're above that then it's great for trending okay it's great for us trending here we can see uh, we got above it here nice little uptrend began okay uh, we got above it here got a little bit rejected but again this is why we want to see this uh this four hour um 200 EMA here just losing my words 200 EMA to be broken this is a great example of why we're looking for that right uh so yeah if if we can break above that 60 minute fantastic stuff and uh yeah we'll we'll ride that trend as it goes but uh, as of right now yeah lots of question marks in the air we will just be watching this pattern it may fill out all the way this week you never know all right and then again just to summarize on the uh, the daily macro here, guys, we are looking to kind of break above, as we said, that 64K uh, break out of this downward sloping trend line. But uh, if we close pretty much where we are right now at the end of today, then uh, yeah, I mean, it could be a bearish day tomorrow where we do revisit the lower 60s and just test this three-day volume weighted ATR band one more time. But it's good, it's good that we're above it, right? If we're above this three-day volume weighted ATR band, it's usually a great sign. Okay, I'm talking about this line here, okay? And uh, yeah, we can usually get massive pumps from that. But uh, we want to be careful here in case uh, it is going to be the end of the run scenario where we do end up uh, essentially maintaining below it and then uh, pushing off of it essentially, right? So uh, let's just keep that in mind. And uh, besides that, yeah, have a fantastic day. Thank you for liking the video. Leave me a comment. Let me know anything you guys are doing in the space right now. I'm always interested to hear what my fellow analysts and traders are doing. So uh, yeah, hopefully you got some value from this video. Peace out and goodbye from me. Howden.